How are you all doing? I hope that you're doing safe and you're doing well at home. And I wanted to say thank you for joining us in episode number four of Storytelling. Today I have a very special guest and my guest's name is Luna. She's my nine-year-old cat and today she will be singing the song with us and she's also going to be reading the book with us. Okay, so I hope that families, parents, and children, you enjoy, okay? Okay, so if you can remember the song that we sing in every storytelling episode, which is called These Are My Glasses by Lori Berkner. So we'll remember the lyrics and the actions as well, okay? Luna, can, can we review the actions of this song, These Are My Glasses? Okay, so we have to show that we're wearing our glasses. We're going to put our hands together just like this. Just like this. There you go. Okay. And we're going to pretend that we have a book by putting your hands together just like this. We're going to open the book. And we're going to pretend we're reading. We read, read, read. And we're going to pretend that we're looking. We put our glasses on. We look, look, look. I down our glasses. And we're going to close the book. Whoops! We close the book. So now let's hold our book this way and let's see what kind of things are inside the book. Luna, do you want to see what's inside the book? Okay, ready? Da 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 da. Ta da da da. Whoa! Luna, it's an orange cat. Wow! Let's close the book. Whoops! Close the book. Okay. Let's see again. Ta da da da. Ta da da da. <gasps> Luna, it's a white kitty cat. Wow, it's so fluffy and cute. Okay, let's close the book together. Whoops. Wow, we got two kitty cat friends. Okay, let's see. What is something else that's hiding in the book? Okay, ready? Da 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 da. Ta da da da. Wow! There's confetti everywhere! That is super fun! Isn't that fun? Yeah! Okay, now let's close the book. Whoops! We close the book. Okay, so now I think we're ready to sing our These Are Our Glasses song, right? Okay, can we sing together? Are you ready, Luna, to join? Okay, I guess you're ready because you're looking at me. Okay, here we go. These are my glasses, this is my book. I put on my glasses and open up the book. Now I read, 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 and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and whoops, close up the book. Okay, how about let's sing that one more time. Let's, let's try to sing that song one more time, families, okay? Are you ready? Yes? Are you families ready? Here it goes. These are my glasses. This is my book. I put on my glasses and open up the book. Now I read, 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 and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and whoops, close up the book. Yay! Great job singing, everyone and participating. That was awesome. Okay, now it's time for us to see what story we're going to do for today. Okay, are you ready? Drum roll, please. Okay, there's a hint. This story is actually about a beautiful princess. Now, before I tell you the title of the book, let me just put on a princess cape on my cat, Luna. Luna, I got you a princess cape. Wow! Okay. Are we ready to tell the families and the children what book we're reading today? Okay. The book that we're reading for today is... Ta-da! The Paper Bag Princess by Robert Munch. Stop! Before we start with our story, we need to remember what our five-point check is. 
so we know that we are ready to read the book. Children, do you remember what the five point check is? Number one, remember to sit down nicely. Remember to tune in with your ears. Remember, the third one is remember to keep your mouth quiet. Need to be quiet and remember to put our hands on our lap just like this. Now we're ready to listen to the story. The Paper Bag Princess, a story by Robert Munch and illustrated by Michael Marchenko. Elizabeth was a beautiful princess. She lived in a castle and had expensive princess clothes. She was going to marry a prince named Ronald. Unfortunately, a dragon smashed her castle and burned all her clothes with his fiery breath and carried off Prince Ronald. Elizabeth decided to chase the dragon and get Prince Ronald back. She looked everywhere for something to wear, but the only thing that she could find was a burnt paper bag. So she put on the paper bag and followed the dragon. He was very easy to follow because he left a trail of burnt forest and horse's bones. Finally, Elizabeth came to a cave with a large door and had a huge knocker on it. She took hold of the knocker and banged on the door. The dragon stuck his nose out of the door and said, Well, a princess. I love to eat princesses, but I have already eaten a whole castle today. I'm a very busy dragon. Come back tomorrow. And he slammed the door so fast that Elizabeth almost got her nose caught. Elizabeth grabbed the knocker and banged on the door again very fast. The dragon stuck his nose out of the door and said, Go away! I love to eat princesses, but I already have eaten a whole castle today. I'm a very busy dragon. Come back tomorrow. Wait, wait, shouted Elizabeth. Is it true that you are the smartest and fiercest dragon in the whole world? Yes, said the dragon. Is it true, said Elizabeth, that you can burn up to a hundred forests with your fiery breath? Oh yes, said the dragon. And he took a huge deep breath and breathed out so much fire that he burnt up to 50 forests. Fantastic, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath and breathed out so much fire that he burned up a hundred forests. Magnificent, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath. This time, nothing came out. The dragon didn't even have enough fire left to cook a meatball. <laughs> Elizabeth said, Dragon, is it true that you can fly around the world in just 10 seconds? Well, yes, said the dragon, and jumped up and flew all around the world in just 10 seconds. He was very tired when he got back but Elizabeth shouted to the dragon, Fantastic! Do it again! Woohoo! So the dragon jumped up and flew around the world in just 20 seconds. When he got back, he was so tired. To talk, he could lay down and went straight to sleep. Elizabeth whispered very softly, Hey, dragon! And the dragon didn't move at all. She lifted up the dragon's ear and put her head right inside and she shouted as loud as she could, Hey, dragon! 
and the dragon was so tired that he didn't even move. Elizabeth walked right over the dragon and opened the door to the cave. There, she found Prince Ronald. He looked at her and he said, Elizabeth, you are a mess. You smell like ashes. And your hair is all tangled. And you are wearing a dirty old paper bag. Come back when you are dressed like a real princess. Ronald, said Elizabeth, your clothes are really pretty and your hair is very neat. You look like a real prince, but you are a bum. And then they didn't get married after all. The and families, I hope that you enjoyed the storytelling of The Paper Bag Princess by Robert Munch. And now we are going to be doing some activities. We're going to be doing some activities. And for today's activity, we are going to be making paper crowns. It's very easy to make and children can follow along with parents' guidance, of course. So we're gonna make our little paper crowns, okay? And Luna, you also have a paper crown, okay? You're not used to wearing crowns, but there. <laughs> it might fall off, but let me just put it over here. Okay, this is Luna's paper crown. Isn't it cute? If you have pets at home, you can also make some paper crowns for them. Or children, if you have some stuffed animals, you can also make some paper crowns for your stuffed animals. Okay, so let me tell you the materials that we need for our paper crowns. The first material that we need for our paper crowns is colored paper. If you don't have any colored paper at home, you can find any white paper or scratch paper and then you can just color it in, okay? And the next material that you need, a few markers. So parents, you can ask your child to pick a few colors that they like you can start with the number five and you can ask them to pick five colors that they really like especially for preschoolers but if you have a child that's a toddler definitely you can give them a choice of two different colors and in that way they can also participate okay and the next thing that you would also need is you would need some tape and you would also need some scissors, okay? So for children who are going to school, so you can do hand over hand with them when you're cutting. So let me just put my paper crown away for one moment and let me show you how we can start. Step number one, you would need to measure your child's head. So you would need to um, decide how much papers you would need. So typically two, pieces of paper of the same color would do and once you have finished uh, measuring your child's head you are going to be putting some tape going to fold the paper in half just like this and you are going to get a marker so you can put a design whether you'd like loops or whether you'd like curves on top as the top of your crown so for me i'm same as my sample over here i'm gonna make pointy pointy tips for my paper crown i was talking to a toddler I would do hand over hand and I would describe the motion as going up and down up and down up and down up and down and for preschoolers they might be able to follow so I would suggest if preschoolers are doing this activity parents you do your own crown and the child the preschooler child or kindergarten child can do their own crown and you can model to them the actions that you're doing and they can copy on their own separate paper okay 
So now the next step that we're going to do now that we have finished doing the tip of the crown is we are going to be cutting the crown. So as I have mentioned earlier, if you have a preschooler, you might want to do hand over hand with them. If you have a kindergartner, you can allow them to cut their own. And a strategy that could also help is if you tape the paper to the edge of a table and in that way it's easier for them to cut the lines that you have drawn or they have drawn okay so that's another strategy for cutting for kindergartners now i have my two crowns over here so it, it, ho it helps to make it a little a little bit sturdy that's why we have two of them okay so now we are going to measure the head of your child so you would know how big or how small you, you would have to make it. Now we have our crown and the next step that we're going to ask our child to do is we are going to ask them to get their favorite colors of markers and now we're going to be drawing some of the things that they like to put on their crown so i drew very basic shapes and swirls and curves so children can easily follow and parents you can be as creative as you want as well in a very easy way and if you have stickers which is optional or if you have some glitters at home or if you have some paint you can definitely paint the shapes paint your paper crowns you can even color it with crayons color it with markers and add stickers children love stickers so I have some stickers over here that I'm going to add I got them from the dollar store there's so many great things at the dollar store so I just added a sticker like that Luna do you like this sticker yeah <laughs> these are some nice things that children love to do and you can make it very special for them okay and you can do some pretend play at home as well using these paper crowns families we hope that you enjoy today's episode of storytelling and you also enjoy the activity and the song that we did we hope that your family is staying safe and healthy at home and Luna and I would like to say thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Thank you everyone. Bye!